Well, I am affectionately known to the community as Uncle Bobby uh, X. I, um, well, my first name is Cephas, and again, um, you know, Uncle Bobby to most people today because I'm the uncle of Oscar Grant. Um, Oscar mother Wanda is my baby sister, Oscar, my very first nephew. So I have many fun memories of him. Uh, of course, um, when my nephew Oscar was murdered. Transit police detain a group of men on a train platform. Hey! Several bystanders are recording the scene when unexpectedly, one of the officers draws his gun and pulls the trigger. I um, became the spokesperson for my sister because she was totally unable to speak, just really in a state of shock, but um, questioning God and why would he allow her to say to her son, catch bark. And because of that, she began to blame herself for his death, believing that if she had not told him, he could be living today. Uh, and, you know, I'm so thankful that God gave me the words and the courage to stand up on her behalf until she got her voice. And, you know, in the process of doing that, I started the Oscar Grant Foundation uh, for her and Tatiana. And that, you know, five years later when she began to really speak, I gifted the Oscar Grant Foundation to her. And my wife and myself then um, uh, co-founded the Love Not Blood campaign, where we're at today. But during all that process, um, what was really impactful for me was when a family member from New York came all the way to L.A., uh, Nicholas Hayward, and I'll never forget this, and Juanita Ferguson uh, came all the way from New York to our trial. And when Nicholas embraced me to let me know that he was from New York and he wanted to bring as much love and support to us as a family in this process of getting justice, it was extremely impactful to me. And I'll never forget it, you know, and uh, you know, I can't remember if he cried, but it really brought tears to me. So I really, really emotionally felt that. And what I got from that was that I had to do the same thing to any family that I possibly could touch or get to. You know, if God allowed me to get there financially, I was there. Uh, if it was around the corner and I had to walk, I was there, but I would do my best to get there. And so from um, being a part of the committee and um, creating the event that we had today uh, meant so much to me in hoping that families that come can be empowered with this wealth of knowledge that we all have in our own little huddle, in our own little space that others may not even know about, a step in the whole process. And to share that information among ourselves so that we all can become knowledgeable of various aspect of this process. And so uh, I am extremely happy that happened. I really feel good about um, families being empowered and impacted by the event. Uh, the bonding, of course, took place. You know, um, Cornel West has said to us that if you want to hear the truth, you must let the suffering speak. speak. So creating space for families the to tell the could for my nephew. Their story, to tell their experience, to share the fact that they still struggling to get an autopsy report, you know, and, and to hear from someone that actually was able to get their autopsy report becomes a way of how that person, that family, can now think about utilizing that same steps to get their autopsy report. Um, you know, it's been a very, very loving, heartfelt day for me, you know, to see this extended family that we have today to come together, you know, and, and to reunite and, and again to, uh, we're, we're, we're bonded by blood, but united in love, you know, and we know that it's our love for that next person that's going to create this real movement that we want to bring the changes that we need. You know, I said a whole lot about myself, but I'll say just a little bit about my nephew because anyone today can actually get Fruitvale Station, their claim movie, Fruitvale Station.
next stop, Fruitvale Station. We're gonna go to Frisco, right? To the fireworks? Hmm? We ain't gonna say bye? Bye. Love you too. Everything's changing around me. And I wanna change. Hey, hey. what's up, girl? It's now or never. I'm trying to get back on my feet. I really need this job. I hired somebody else. I feel different today. What'd you do today? I don't know what else to say. I thought I could start over fresh, but it ain't working out. It's now or never. I'm scared. Your guns. Those are firecrackers. You're safe inside. What about you, Daddy? We'll be back before you wake up. I'm gonna be fine. You guys got plans for the night? I meet up with the fellas, head out to the city. Why don't you check the train out there? That way you guys can hang out and not have to worry about anything. Hey, Oscar. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oscar? Oscar from Pharmacia? Get off the train now! Put that phone in there. Where you at? Are you still on the train? We're still at Fruitville. Why can't you tell me what is going on? What is the problem? What are you doing? Oh my god. Good, I'm good. I'm good. We're gonna be good. We're gonna be good. and get a gist of understanding of our relationship. But if they wanted to see the actual shooting, they can go to YouTube, Oscar Grant shooting, and YouTube's videos will pop up all over the place. And you can witness for yourself the murder of my nephew, Oscar Grant, which happened on January 1st, 2009 at the Fruitvale Bark Station in Oakland, California, where actually I'm, myself is from, our family is from, the Bay Area. Oscar grew up in Hayward. You know, a fun memory that I have of Oscar is I can remember when he was about five years old, when he was finally ready to come spend the night with his uncle. Because I had been trying to get him. He was scared to leave his mama. And then one day he walked up and he just pulled my pants and said, Uncle, 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 can I come spend the night? And, and you know, and it made me feel good. And this is my first nephew, you know, and he finally wasn't scared of me. You know, he was ready to go with his uncle. And, and so we began to hang out, you know, and, uh, you know, taught him how to play chess. And boy was getting good. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I remember, you know, my sister blamed me for this, but he was in the car with me. I used to burn my rubber on the car, smoke them tires. Next thing I know, he had that bad habit, you know. <laughs> you know, so these are just, you know, these memories will never leave, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm so grateful that in this whole process, when he was speaking to me spiritually before this happened, and I questioned myself, why is he talking to me in my spirit? And I decided to respond. You know, God urged me to respond. And I texted him and I said, Uncle love you. God loves you. God loves your family. And an hour and a half later, he was murdered. And when I saw that video and collapse and coming back around consciously in so much rage and anger, he revealed to me that that text was for me. It wasn't for Oscar. Because had I not texted Oscar, there would have been no way I could take my pain to purpose. My pain would have been pain to destruction. And so I always share that when our spirit is feeling someone that we love, that we reach out because we don't know the, the time, day, hour, or second. You know, this is healing through resistance. We embrace another family, and what we do is take half of that load off ourselves or we acquire half a load of somebody else's pain to make their walk lighter or sharing your pain with someone makes your walk just a little bit lighter. But it's empowering also.